Hello folks, welcome to the second practice set of the SAT series. Let's get started with our first question. So 14x square minus 9x minus 20 divided by ax minus 1 is equal to 7x plus 8 plus minus 12 over ax minus 1 and we have to find the value of a, right? So to begin with, we can write the left side in a little simpler form. We can write it like this. 14x square minus 9x minus 20 divided by ax minus 1. I mean, it's the same thing I'm just writing in, in this form, right? And this is equal to the right side. Now, on the left side, if we see, we have a single fraction, right? We have a numerator and a single denominator, but on the right side, we do not have a single fraction. However, we do see that one of the denominators is the same as this, right? ax minus 1. So essentially, I can consolidate the right side and I can uh, visualize it something like this, right? Plus minus will become minus. So minus 12 over ax minus 1, right? 7x plus 8 is the same as 7x plus 8 divided by 1. Now we know how to subtract the uh, fractions, right? Make the same denominator. So that's what we're going to do. We'll make the same denominator, ax minus 1. And then we'll multiply 7x plus 8 with ax minus 1 and then minus 12, correct? I'm, I'm just doing the simple sub, uh, fraction subtraction here, right? Now, when I look at the left and the right side, the denominators are the same now, right? So essentially, for these two sides to be equal, each of the respective terms have to be equal, right? The x squared term have to be equal to the x squared here, the x term has to be equal to the x term here, and the constant has to be equal to the constant term here, correct? Now let's simplify the numerator of the right side a little bit to see what we get. So we get 7a x square uh, minus 7x plus 8a x minus 8 and then minus 12 is already there divided by a x minus 1, correct? Minus 8 minus 12 becomes minus 20, so it does match. The constant terms do match with each other. If we just look at the x square coefficient, right, for these two sides to be equal, 7a, this coefficient here, has to be equal to 14, correct? So we can say 7a is equal to 14, which will give us a is equal to 2. Divide by 7 here, divide by 7 here, I get a equal to 2. So the answer to this would be a is equal to 2, correct? So essentially, just to reiterate, what we are doing is that we are just making these two sides equal the same denominator and once the denominator are the same we're just equating the numerators and seeing that the respective terms have to be equal i mean we can do the same thing for the x term also right so for example if you look at this one what is the coefficient of x here it's 8a minus 7 correct 8a minus 7 is the overall coefficient of x that has to be equal to minus 9 right, this will also give us a equal to 2. So it doesn't matter, right, because each of the respective terms have to be equal. So whether we do 7a equal to 14 and find the value of a, or we do 8a minus 7 and equal to minus 9 and find the value of a, we're going to get the same thing. Okay, let's go into the question number 2. 6x square minus 5x plus 4 divided by minus 3x plus 1 is equal to minus 2x plus 1 plus a divided by minus 3x plus 1, right and we have to find the value of a, right? Now, this is very similar to the first question which we just did, right? Essentially, we got to simplify the right side and make it look like a single fraction. Again, we notice the same thing here, that the denominators here, minus 3x plus 1, is the same as this, right? So let's go ahead and simplify the right side a little bit. So we can consider this as a single fraction, minus 2x plus 1 divided by 1, and then this is plus a over minus 3x plus 1, right? We will have to make the same denominator. So the denominator would be minus 3x plus 1 of the overall right side, and then this term would be minus 2x plus 1 times minus 3x plus 1 plus a, right? And then we can use the FOIL method and simplify and so on and so forth, right? Which is equal to the left side. Now, by doing this, 
Vm with the same denominator, right? So if the left side has to be equal to the right side, then the, each of the terms within the numerator have to be equal, correct? Now, we can do the FOIL method and simplify this, but if we notice, right, when we do the FOIL method, the only constant term which we will get is 1, right? Because this will give us x square, when we multiply minus 2x with minus 3x, right, it will give us 6x square, when we multiply minus 2x plus with 1, it will give you minus 2x, and so on. So the point I'm trying to make is that only 1 times 1 will give you the constant term. So whatever you get here, right, plus 1 plus a, divided by minus 3x plus 1, correct? Now, if we see, the constant term on the right side is 1 plus a, and the constant term here is 4. So we can simply write 1 plus a is equal to 4, which will give us a is equal to 3. It's very similar to the first question which we just did, right? The whole point I'm trying to make is that we can save some time in not doing the complete foil between these two because we are only interested in A, right? And that's a part of the constant term. And the constant term here is 4. And the only constant term which we will get by the foil method would be 1. And we are only interested in the value of A. So essentially 1 plus A has to be equal to 4, which will give us the value of A as 3. Okay, let's go with our question number 3 here. So 2 to the power of a minus 1 times a plus 1 divided by 2 to the power of a minus 2 times a plus 2. We have to find the value of this expression, right? So the moment we see this, right, we should be able to recognize that these powers, right, this whole portion, a minus 1 times a plus 1 is nothing but in the form of difference of the squares, right? So we know that a plus b times a minus b is equal to a square minus b square, right? So this expression here, the power on the numerator would be nothing but a square minus 1 square, which is nothing but a square minus 1, correct? Same thing here, right? a minus 2 times a plus 2. So a minus 2 times a plus 2 is nothing but a square minus 2 square, which is a square minus 4, a square minus 4, correct? So if we see, right, the, the power here is nothing but a square minus 1 and this is nothing but a square minus 4, right? Now again we notice that the base are, is the same. So when we are dividing two terms with the same base, we can bring this term uh, up with a negative sign, right? We change the sign of the exponent and we can do the reciprocal, correct? So this whole expression will be nothing but 2 to the power of a square minus 1 times 2 to the power of minus of this, minus of a square minus 4, right? Whenever we do the reciprocal, the sign of the powers, the sign of the exponent changes. So the sign of the entire power will change, right? It will become negative. So which is nothing but 2 to the power of a square minus 1 times 2 to the power of minus a square plus 4, correct? And now we are having these two terms with the same base. And when we multiply the two terms with the same base, we add the powers, right? So these powers are going to be added. So 2 to the power of a square minus 1 minus a square plus 4, because we are adding the powers. a square and a square get cancelled. And we get 2 to the power of minus 1 plus 4 or 3. So 2 to the power of 3, which is equal to 8. So 8 is the answer to our question again. Just to quickly reiterate, we use the difference of the squares and we got a square minus 1 as the power for the numerator here. We got a square minus 4 as the power for the denominator here. And we move this guy up, right? Because, you know, we see that the bases are same. When the bases are same, we can do the negative power here. And then we add the powers and we get the final value as 8. Okay, let's go ahead with our question number 4 here. So 12 to the power of 99 minus 12 to the power of 97 is equal to 12 to the power of 97 times n, where n is an integer, and we have to find the value of n, right? Now, pretty straightforward question, right? If we see the left side, we can actually take 12 to the power of 97 common, right? So 12 to the power of 97 is common, and then for this term, we get 12 to the power of 2 minus 1, correct? 12 to the power of 2 is 144, so, 
this becomes 144 minus 1 and this becomes 143. So essentially, if we look at the right side, the right side is exactly in this form, 12 to the power of 97 times something, and we had to find the value of that something, that value of n is 143. So we just took 12 to the power of 97 common, and once we took it common, we can just simplify and get the value of n. Let's move ahead with our next question. So we have a parabola y is equal to a times x minus h whole square. Uh, the parabola touches the x-axis at 4 comma 0. The y-intercept is given to be 9, and we have to find the value of a, right? Now, we have already been given the equation of the parabola, right? So this is our parabola. y is equal to a x minus h whole square, correct? Essentially, all we need to do is to find the value of h, right? And any one point on the parabola whose coordinate we can plug in here, and hence we can solve for a, right? Now, we need to understand that the vertex form of the parabola is y is equal to a x minus h whole square plus k, right? Where h comma k are the vertex. Now, in this parabola, clearly 4 comma 0 is the vertex, right? It means that the value of h is 4 and the value of k is 0, correct? So we already have the value of h. So the moment we see this picture and the moment we see that 4 comma 0 is the vertex of the parabola, we know that h is 4, correct? All we have to now do is to find any one point on the parabola whose coordinate we can put in terms of x and y and solve for a, right? And they have given us that information as well, right? So the y-intercept is 9. So essentially, this point here is 0, 9, right? So that's the y-intercept. So essentially, if we see, we have got the value of x, y, we, we know the value of h, we can plug in these values here to solve for a. Let's do that. So the value of y would be 9 is equal to a. The value of x is 0. We are, we are actually putting this coordinate here in the x and y, 0 minus 4 whole square. And of course, k is 0. So which gives us 9 is equal to 16a. And divide by 16 on both sides. So you get a is equal to 9 over 16. Pretty straightforward and pretty quick, right? Just to quickly reiterate, we see this parabola, we know that the vertex is 4 comma 0. This is already in the vertex form, right? So h is 4. They have given us the y-intercept is 9, so we know another point 0 comma 9. So we plug in that point here, we put the value of h as 4 and solve for a. Okay, let's take one last question here. So we have a function or a parabolic function y is equal to ax minus 1 times x plus 5. The minimum value of this function is minus 12, and we have to find the value of a, right? Now, if we notice, right, this function is given in the roots form, right? So if we were to find the two roots of this function, what would be those two roots? The two roots would be x is equal to 1 and x is equal to minus 5, correct? So essentially, those are the x-intercept of this function, correct? So if you were to visualize this parabola, it would be something like this. It would cut here at 1, and it would cut here at minus 5, right? And the minimum value is minus 12. So it's going upwards because it has a minimum value. So let's say this is minus 12. So the parabola would be something like this, correct? Because the minimum value of the function or the parabola is minus 12, and the two roots are 1 and minus 5. Correct? And we have to find the value of a. So essentially, similar to the last question, all we are looking for is any one point on the parabola, right, which we can plug in here and solve for a. Correct? Now, if you see, let's look at the vertex here. The y coordinate of the vertex is already given to be as minus 12, right? And we know that the parabola is always symmetrical 
around the vertex, right? The axis of symmetry. So the x coordinate of this vertex is nothing would be nothing but the midpoint of these two, right? So the, what is the midpoint of minus five and one? Minus five plus one divided by two, right? The midpoint is the average of the two endpoints, correct? The mean or the average. So this is equal to minus four over two or equal to minus two. Hence, the x coordinate of this vertex would be minus two. So we got what we are looking for. We were looking for any one point and we got a point on the parabola, which is minus two comma minus 12, minus two, comma minus 12. You can plug in this point here and solve for a, right? Let's do that. So minus 12 is equal to a, minus 2 minus 1 is minus 3, minus 2 plus 5 is plus 3, minus 12 is equal to minus 9a. We divide by 9, we divide by 9, a is equal to 12 over 9 or 4 over 3. So that is the value of A. Again, just to quickly reiterate, right? They have given us the y coordinate of the vertex because they have given us the minimum value and they have given us the two roots, the two x intercepts. We can find the midpoint of those two x intercepts and find the x coordinate of the vertex because a parabola is always symmetrical along the axis of symmetry. We got that point as minus 2. So minus two comma minus 12 is one of the points on the parabola. We plug in this point here and solve for A. Hey folks, hopefully you liked the video and you found the examples, the samples useful and meaningful. Keep practicing and in case of any questions, please do feel free to reach out to us at info.mathletes at gmail.com. See you in the next session.